Podcasters. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have an idea episode. I'm excited about this one because it's, it's, it's near and dear to my heart. And we're going to be talking about what is energy intelligence. And yeah, you heard me right, energy intelligence. So to have that conversation, we brought in the expert. I have Natalie Birdwell, who is the VP of Corporate and Strategic Development at Industrial.io. So welcome, Natalie. Thanks, Chris. Glad to be here. Thanks well, for having me. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And just, you know, full disclosure for our listeners, you know, I heard a great conversation with, that Natalie had on Manufacturing Happy Hour. Uh, we'll put that link in the show notes for, for, for you guys so you can go check check that out, hear that conversation she had. It was so good. And then I found out Natalie was actually in Raleigh, which is where we're located as our headquarters. So I was like, all right, we, we got to talk. So so excited to have you. Got to learn a little bit about Industrial.io, you know, you know, leading up to this conversation, but maybe get a starter for for the listeners out there who may not have heard of that energy intelligence. How would you define that to someone that's new to the topic? Sure, sure. So um, energy intelligence is um, a term that we really have embraced. And so when we approach, um, you know, helping our customers being able to optimize their operations, one of the you know great pieces of what I would call attainable and low hanging fruit is around energy. And so being energy intelligent is being able to look at your operations holistically, marrying your energy data with your production data. And so you can use both of those to operate smartly and um, be able to, you know, increase the, your bottom line and, um, Definitely decrease your your energy use, and we define that as being able to to measure kind of your energy per um, unit of production. And so once you get to that point, then you can start looking at the bigger picture of your operations and operate in an energy intelligent manner where production meets energy. Very cool. Now we're going to definitely unpack a lot of that as we go. You know, I love the marrying the energy to production data. I think we need to explore that some, you know, definitely that I'm curious on the metrics, that energy per unit of production, you know, how that comes up. So the listeners may be thinking about, okay, what does that actually mean? But maybe before we get there, you know, industrial.io, you're a relatively new company. Could you give us a brief introduction of what you guys, you know, what do you do? What's your mission? What, what industries you serve? Things like that. Sure, sure. So I'll give you a brief history of of the the company. Okay. We actually started somewhat local, so um, in Durham, so close to the Raleigh area, in the American Underground. And additionally, when we started, it was um, mainly we were doing lighting upgrades and solar projects mm -hmm. for industrial facilities. And the company was called Sustainable Industrial Solutions. What we quickly found out was that um, to be able to really understand how much improvement that you've had and um, the value of these projects, that it's really hard to do if you're only looking at a utility bill, right? right? Um, right. And so, let's say the first, you know, the first month that you're live with one of these projects, and it was the hottest month in North Carolina in the last five years, or your production went up thirty percent. All you know, interesting things, but it. It gives you a lot of difficulty in measuring that. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's when we looked around the market and said, hey, there's a there's a need for industrial facilities to be able to do measurement and verification and to pull together these disparate data systems to become really energy intelligent. And so that's when Industrial IO was born um, back in 2015. And so um, now where, where we've come is that we have, you know, lived by that mantra of being able to help our industrial customers um, to be able to reduce their energy, operate in an energy intelligent manner and do so while being able to scale and even increase production and um, increase, you know, their their bottom line. And so um, our largest customer that we've we've been very fortunate to grow with is called Lineage Logistics, mm -hmm. and they are the largest cold chain provider in the world. So um, about a third of what everyone in the U.S. eats every day comes through a Lineage cold storage facility. Really? Um, and so we've 
we've been able to, you know, impact their operations, help them scale, um, and also reduce their um, energy spend, but what we would call their avoided energy spend, if they would have done nothing, mm-hmm. um, along the lines of tens and tens of millions of dollars over the last couple of years. Wow. Now that's, what a story. I mean, all st- and all started in Durham, North Carolina. All in, in a basement. In a basement. <laughs> the American underground. <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is an American story right there. That's awesome. I mean, first of all, go Bulls. I got to get that in real quick because I'm, I'm a Durham man myself. But uh, but great. I love the connection and what you guys are doing. And, and I'm thinking about, you know, Natalie, I've been to a lot of industrial plants out there. And, mm. you know, you walk into these, these power rooms and they're doing some monitoring. Maybe they, they're monitoring some certain areas of gear. And, you know, they have a mindset, you know, well, I'm doing that, you know, so you know, I can go see when something happens, but you're actually trying to shift it to energy intelligence. So, you know, what's, what's the key there? What's, what's the big hurdle to try to get that industrial user to start thinking that way? Sure. I, you know, you hit the, you hit it spot on, Chris, so there's, you know, there's a lot of smart meters out there mm-hmm. and, and kind of these sensors all over facilities but they may be um kind of standalone or you have to walk up to them you have to you know go to six different systems to try to pull that data out of it and a lot of times it's looking back right it's not a real time and it and i think that's been one of the big mindset shifts is especially from an energy standpoint is you know a lot of energy management systems are more monitoring. And so they look and they kind of deliver you a a back looking view, Uh right? uh Okay. Well, this is what we did historically. Uh Uh, And then you try to make some, some changes or adjustments. Then you need to wait another week, another month, another, until you can actually see how those um, things had an impact. And you quite often to be able to gather that data, have to walk around and get it from all these disparate systems. And so the shift in mindset is to be able to say, Hey, the technology is there. The tools are there to be able to harness real time data Mm -hmm. and let's take real time data. And so you can make real time informed decisions. And so now um, if you have a dashboard in front of you that has not only your you know current demand data from your real time meters, right. sub meter data from some of your significant energy users, and now you have you understand your um, the rate tariff that you're on, um, you know integrating what we would call day ahead or real time pricing. Now you start to get a picture of hey, here's how I can adjust my operations this afternoon, tomorrow morning, and still you know, meet all of my production goals, but do it in a way that um, you know, reduces our, our cost of energy. Right. Uh, and, and that's kind of the, the first entry level that we take. Now, that is so cool. Now, when you were, when you were walking through that, I had something pop in my brain on how maybe I would explain this to to a manufacturing plant and correct me if I'm off base. So I'm going to relate this to a GPS and you know, when we're driving our car, we look through the rear view, that's what's, that's already what's happened. So maybe that's the, the energy monitoring, right. That, that most plants have. But when we plug in your GPS now, you know, it maps out where you're going, but it, it even will adjust, you know, maybe there's an accident and it'll reroute you. That's the intelligence built in from, you know, from a, from an analogy standpoint that I see these plants can make, right? So, cause I'm picturing for you, we're yeah. looking at the windshield, but we're also forecasting what's going to happen several days ahead so that I can adjust my production and things like my process, you know, well in advance to make more informed decisions. So is, is that off base or am I think you know, am, I, am I in the right lane here? <laughs> I think you're definitely on the right road okay. and in the right lane. <laughs> okay. Um, no, that's a I, that's an interesting way to put it, and I think that that's a good analogy of, you know, we want to to learn and make and mm-hmm. absolutely take into account all of that historical data and where you've come from, and and you know get that baseline, okay, right? right, so right. that you can start to operate like, hey, I know that um, what my baseline is of the the road that I've traveled. You know, I know. Right. 
I know my car pulls to the left a little bit. Right, right. That's right. <laughs> right. So, so we create that baseline, but then also start to give optionality based on um, the the dynamic market that is out there, um, okay. and in you know the the changes in your operations that can happen. So, I, I think a good maybe a good example of this is back in um, earlier this year, kind of January, February timeframe, I believe it was February, the big freeze that happened in Mm -hmm. Texas. Mm -hmm. I think everybody across the country knew about that big freeze. Right. Um, And the things that were going on with ERCOT and, and so um, lineage has a lot of facilities within Texas and what we were able to do is to your point, hey, they were at a crossroads. It was sort of this unknown. There was a wreck, if you will, mm-hmm. you know, right. in, in their normal path. And so what, you know, what are all our alternatives and how can we make informed decisions? And so the the data from our system and pulling in the data that we were pulling from the utilities of those those day ahead pricing and and you know where things were going putting that all together in one place um, enabled them to make some really strategic and critical operational decisions that helped save them hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars during that time and be able to still, you know, keep all of their, um, their product intact and, and, um, and service their customers. And so, it enabled a lot of decision making for and in an uncertain time. Right. Um, that that proved to be beneficial to their bottom line. And I think that is that's obviously, you know, hopefully an anomaly case and a more extreme case, but you see things like that mm-hmm. happening. There's more and more uncertainty that's happening within your four walls of your manufacturing facility and you know, external factors with um, grid stability and resilience and in, in, in utilities. Yeah. What a great story. Now, I mean, you probably have some listeners out there, Natalie, that are pretty jacked up right now and they're arcing, they're, they're thinking <laughs> that's a wonderful apply it to my plant, help me get started. So maybe give us if, if, if you're interested in walking this energy intelligence path, you know, are there any areas of low hanging fruit or is there any good places to start, you know, inflecting change and to, to begin an initiative like this? Sure. So I, I think, you know, being able to pull together that baseline mm-hmm. is a great first, you know, first step. And so we've been able to, to go in and put some, some simple, um, you know, on a train on whether it's your, your main feeds, uh, okay. you know, a couple of, of sub metering opportunities possibly for identified significant energy users so if they don't have the metering themselves like industrial.io you guys come in and, and help put the, the meters in place that they need to pull that to, to to get that good baseline data yes we can deliver an end-to-end solution so we work with customers i like to say we meet facilities where they are at in terms of um, capabilities for integrations of systems, for meters, for sensors, okay. um, in, in helping them put together as a, you know, architect a strategy um, of what they need from a, a metering or a monitoring standpoint. If they have that, if they have preferred installers, great, we can work with them. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, we can, you know, be able to deliver that whole solution for them and, and help um, get that equipment in the facility and start off with that, that baselining and being able to see that real time, um, data. And so now you can start to build off of, uh, and create some insights off of that. I love it. I love it. Now that, that, that's talking about the getting the started piece. Now let's, let's connect the second piece for the listener who's in the manufacturing plant who let, let, let's, let's go to the who. You know, like who's involved in these projects? Because I'm sure it's not just one department that you guys are coordinating with. I could be yeah. wrong, but, you know, what? who who needs to be involved for success? Sure, sure. Well, kind of going back to that baseline case, okay. right, of just getting started, getting eyes on it, right? Being able to, to see in real time what's happening 
Um, our team can also go in and uh, do some analysis around complex rate tariffs to look at what you know other rate structures are available in that area. Mm-hmm. And typically there's some pretty easy adjustments that can be made relatively quickly mm-hmm. um, that that creates a, a, a fast payback. Okay. Um, and so now when we start to look at moving into that real energy intelligence, Mm -hmm. and wrapping in um, production data. And so you can start to have what we would call production normalized KPIs of saying, hey, you know, we spend this much in energy costs per, you know, product made or widget made or pounds of food, however that is. And now you start to get um, the capability to have a um, KPI that goes across multiple facilities in multiple geographies and um, and really be able to compare them while taking into account the uniqueness of each facility, but being able to, to compare them across the board as an enterprise. And so who is involved in that? Um, we start, it's a wide range of folks, mm-hmm. obviously at the facility level. So um, we've worked with regional maintenance managers, facility maintenance managers, all the way through the executive team of looking at, um, you know, what goals that they have as a, as a company from an executive standpoint that they want to drive and, and be able to accomplish with, um, with these tools. Um, we've worked with engineering, operations, and finance. Um, because it's, you know, the, the utility bills, the dollars, the, you know, raw material, the, um, the cost of everything that goes into production, including mm-hmm. effort, right? Um, and then bringing those together. So uh, typically, you know, facility kick it off, but a lot of times we've, we've also come in and, and worked with, you know, the executive team and the finance team that says, hey, I think this could be really beneficial or come in and worked with the operations and engineering team that says, Hey, we, we want to be able to get our eyes on this across the board and do it in a way that we can take into account the individuality of each facility and how they operate. I can, I can only imagine the complexities that go with that when you're trying to cross that many different types of departments and personalities for projects like this, (laughs) hats off to you for figuring out how to do it. I am very curious though, you you mentioned and you mentioned it earlier that energy per unit of production and that production normalized KPIs just now. That mm. seems like that's a key point to to hone in on because mm-hmm. that would resonate with the main with the individual manufacturer, no matter where you're at in that in that chain of command or or, or different departments. If you get those right, um, yes. it sounds like the rest of it kind of falls in place. And, is that is that a key area that you that you're focusing on to to get on you know head to, headed towards success? Absolutely, and I think that's the that's the powerful piece, mm-hmm. right, of being able to correlate production with mm-hmm. energy. And when you look at those things together through that that those KPIs, mm-hmm. now you are not looking at them in a silo. And so if you make an adjustment over here and you pull a few levers. Um, and you in and you're not really sure why you know production decreased or right. Um, right. Well, your energy usage decreased, but I have no idea what's going on in my production. Well, maybe my production increase or yep. decreased that month. Excuse yep. me. And so being able to correlate those two things together, you're right. And it, it makes what I would call a common language yep. across the facility, mm-hmm. across um, the enterprise in a common language across different geographies right. as well. And so you can also then start to take into account if I have a um, facility that measures by, you know, turns, by, by pounds of food, by um, numbers of diapers that they make, right. um, you know, numbers of bottles or cans that they make, mm-hmm. um, it, 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 then becomes real to what they're doing every day and the production and the output and the goals that they have, those are married together instead of being separate. So, 
Are, is that the is that the red thread then? Is that the com- the commonality the the number of the production output? Or, I mean, I'm trying to see are there any metrics that you're seeing repetitive? Like there, this is important here. It's been important here. It's important here. Right, in, that just keep working throughout. Yes, absolutely. So there's, um, you know, where we take a, a an approach is that you have complex rate tariffs for a lot of these mm-hmm. industrial facilities. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's common threads per geography of what is offered um, as far as rate tariffs, um, the different options that you have for demand response um, in uh, whether you're in a, in a deregulated market or regulated market. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's some, some common things that we see and we've identified throughout different geographies that we can go in and, and address and take down. Okay. Um, and then, you know, when we start to layer in that production data, it's really a partnership with mm-hmm. the end user to understand what is most important in their operations. And that is what comes to to light, right? Right. Um, If I take a step back and I say, hey, kind of where is this going at a higher level? Um, What we're seeing is a lot of um, a lot more uh, ESG goals, long-term carbon goals Mm -hmm. for um, enterprises across you know, all of their facilities. Um, those are um, KPIs. Those are goals that are being driven down through organizations. And where we're really positioning is being able to um, empower that. And so we have a, a carbon um, a, a carbon conversion, if you will, of just saying, hey, here's how much energy you all have been able to reduce. And what does that translate to in um, reduction of carbon? And um, those things are becoming really valuable for these facilities instead of saying, I don't know how I'm going to achieve this. Now, all of your levers are in front of you, right? right? And, right. and when, you, when you change something, now you can start to see how it actually impacts either production or your, your cost or your usage. And so you can iterate much faster to mm-hmm. achieve those goals. And you probably get a lot more alignment too, because people are seeing the actual impact. It's, it becomes part of just their process and their culture. I mean, you're, you're, you're really shifting a lot of thinking just all, all the way down to, to the, I guess culture is the right word inside of a plant when you start doing things like this. Sure. And I think Chris, one of, you know, coming from from the industrial space, mm-hmm. you you have so many things to worry about mm-hmm. every day, right? To keep everything up and going, and make sure you're you're hitting those goals and safety and production quality, and and so if if we can enable this, and this right. is our goal, is enabling this in a way that is not cumbersome, that actually makes job easier to achieve these things instead of having to run around and and you know take um take readings from multiple systems and Mm -hmm. have to be physically at you know a piece of equipment if we can consolidate that and and be able to automate those things and automate some of these standard practices that are you know in line with your um, production metrics then that makes it powerful and a lot less of a lift and it's easier versus you know trying to climb a mountain no doubt no doubt now we may have that that um that pessimistic listener out there natalie and they're trying to figure they're they're hearing they're hearing what you're saying but let's just give them the truth man what what the bad part what's the hard part about starting an energy energy intelligent solution i mean uh, because i think if we can be real with people and get them to, uh, to, to understand, Hey, this is not all cupcakes and rainbows. This may, <laughs> you may mm-hmm. run into some headwinds. What would they be? Mm-hmm. Sure. I, well, it varies okay. for each customer. And I think that's, that's probably the biggest point of truth, so right? Is it like is a people that... thing more? Is it, or is it like an equipment, you know, hurdle primarily? I'm just trying I mean, to, 
Yeah, I would say you have both, right? Okay. So when you when you look at the um, about getting data out of facility, let's just take um, meters, mm-hmm. right? Some facilities already have meters. Some facilities don't. Good point. Um, some facilities have submetered equipment. Some facilities don't. Um, some facilities have, uh, you know, really robust um, industrial control systems that go up to a historian and, uh, or, you know, a a DCS, a SCADA Mm -hmm. system, right? Some are still operating in in, um, much more kind of controls are much more OEM based per Mm -hmm. equipment and not necessarily connected. Right. So when we talk about, you know, how to go implement that solution, I think that's where our, um, energy IOT team that you referenced earlier comes in to be able to say, okay, how can we meet you where you're at to be able to grab not only the energy data, but start to, to pull in that production data and find a solution that doesn't mean that you have to rip out expensive control systems and replace them right somebody that just raised their hand there's a listener out there who just put their hand up like, like yes i got it amen <laughs> because you you know that's a huge capital expense so how can we um go in maybe do some upgrades you know meet meet you where you're at right. and devise solutions so i'll give you give you an example right um with lineage so they are, these facilities are basically huge refrigerators and freezers. Okay. A big part of that is a refrigeration control system. Mm-hmm. And so we have gone and worked with and, and partnered with a lot of their refrigeration control vendors to say, okay, how can we um, pull the data out of that system mm-hmm. that is highly valuable to understanding the real-time operations of what's on and what's off in the temperature settings. But then also we can push data back to that oh. system. And so now you're starting to be able to do a, an, an automated control. So for instance, if you um, have a demand response opportunity that you've never really been able to take advantage of in, mm-hmm. in, in your area, and um, you have some light metering on there, but you don't have a, an integration to the control system. What typically happens is you get a phone call. And they say, hey, we'd, we'd like you guys to cut load right now. Mm-hmm. And so then you got to figure out who's going to go to that system and, you know, run that curtailment and, mm-hmm. and program it and, and cut the load and do it in a safe manner. Right. right? Um, and so when we work with these control systems, A, there's, you know, working with them to make sure that all of these operations are done in a safe manner per that OEM or per that control system, but then being able to, to automate it. And so once the facility says, yeah, we're comfortable with that, we, we think that that's a great operating procedure. So the next time that we get a call, industrial takes that in automatically um, through an API, and then we're able to send that signal out to um, the facility. They say, yes, go ahead and run this. And we can push that signal directly to the refrigeration control system and it runs that cycle. And so it'll curtail load and then it will come back up um, as it is supposed to without someone having to, to be physically right. there doing that. So that's, that's one aspect. I think you were asking about the, the culture change, right? Um, being able to pull all this data together definitely crosses uh, different divisions. Yeah. And so um, I think the way to cross that hurdle that we found is successful is being able to show value to each one of those, those divisions and those people. And when we come back and start really talking about, um, you know, how to save time, how to um, uh, be able to do these things with these normalized KPIs, like you were saying, is that common language that mm-hmm. everybody starts to understand and, and be able to compare, then that becomes really powerful. That is awesome. So what a, what a great way to tie this all together. And 
And Natalie, this has been very insightful. And we call it Eco Ask Why. I always wrap up with the why. You know, that's that's the, the question at the end that I think our listeners hold on to. And I really hope that you you to tie this together for them. So from an energy intelligence standpoint, you know, why is utilizing that type of technology so important to to the success of industries in the future? Sure. Um the world continues to change mm-hmm. as we know, right? But there's, there's things that we were, um, have remained the same in some ways in, in industrial manufacturing. Right. Right. And that is that, um, people want to produce a quality product, um, that is economical in a, a fast manner and be able to do that repeatedly and so to to hit all of those things as as you know external pressures start to come how can you do that dynamically and how can you do it better um and how can you do it um and achieve these new goals without having to invest you know tons of money and new equipment and, you know, ripping and replacing and, and, you know, completely changing your operations. And so the why we do this is, is really to enable industrial facilities to, um, you know, optimize not only their um, production, but their energy together, which is their inner operating energy intelligently then. Um, And, and they can do that to then, have a sustained competitive advantage. Right. And that's really what we're always striving to, to right? Um, and the more that we can, we can influence that in saying that, hey, there's some of these things that if we just put a few more data points together, mm-hmm. that piece of the puzzle really starts to, to form a puzzle. And now you're in control and you're in control in real time right. instead of, um, looking in the rear view mirror, like you said, and now we're, we have a lot more roads and options, um, that we can take advantage of that we may not have known about before. Right. And so, um, we want to be able to open those things up because that in and of itself, you know, gives, gives success to facilities and to our customers. It does. What a powerful conversation. I think it's a topic we definitely haven't covered you just dunked all over it, Natalie. This is great. This is wonderful. <laughs> for for the people out there that want to get connected, we'll make sure that there's connections to industrial.io, to you personally on LinkedIn. Any other links, uh, they'll be in the show notes. So definitely check those out, listeners. Check, you know, Connect with industrial.io because there's wonderful things they're doing. And Natalie, phenomenal job. Thank you for breaking this down for us. Thanks for having me, Chris. It was so much fun and I hope um all the listeners enjoyed it and and enjoyed our time together absolutely you have a wonderful day you too thanks all right everybody that was a great conversation with natalie where she really walked through energy intelligence with us i know i learned a ton i hope you did as well i want to remind everyone to send us those war stories we really want those you can get us on facebook and instagram to send those to us directly and always keep asking why 